Hey everybody, it's Alex here from Android Headlines, and this is the video review of the Droid Ultra, so let's get started. So here you are with the Motorola Droid Ultra. It's basically the Moto X, but with the 5-inch descri uh, display. It's also only available on Verizon, it's an exclusive device. In the past, Motorola has done GSM versions of their Droid devices for outside of the US, but this year they are not. These are only available on Verizon, there's no GSM version. Although you can buy it unlocked, because the SIM card is unlocked, and it does take a Nano SIM, which is right underneath the volume button, or volume rocker there. So if you have a Nano SIM, it'll work pretty good. So as far as hardware goes, we're looking at a Snapdragon S4 Pro dual core at 1.7 gigahertz. Yes, that's last year's uh, processor, but it, it still performs really well, especially on this device. It's using uh, Motorola's X8 mobile computing um, system. It's got two gigs of RAM. Uh, there's a five inch 720p AMOLED display, which the reason for that is it's showing you right now, active display, because AMOLED it lights up each individual pixel so when the time and your notifications pop up it only pops up those pixels instead of the entire display so it doesn't impact battery life we also have three capacitive buttons down here at the bottom and then down here at the very bottom you've got your micro USB port and on the right side you've got your volume rocker along with your power button up top you've got your um, headphone jack and on the other side there's nothing over here in the back you've got your 10 megapixel clear pixel camera along with your flash droid logo Motorola logo Ryzen logo no 4G LTE logo which is pretty surprising now you probably are noticing that on the back it's pretty glossy because you can actually see me behind the camera here and as you can see I just wiped this down before I started this video and look at all the fingerprints already. That's really the biggest con for me with the Droid Ultra. It may not keep me from buying it, but it's still something to be worried about, especially if you don't like having those fingerprints on there. Um, it does have Kevlar under there, which you can kind of see. I don't know if it's like real Kevlar, if it's just made to look like it, but in older versions of the droids like last year and the year before they had Kevlar but not the glossy the Moto or the droid max has Kevlar in the back and it's not glossy so I don't know why they didn't go that way with the droid ultra but who knows so some of the features on here we've got the active display got touchless control so you can say okay Google now play blurred lines mm. And then it'll jump into Google Play Music. Or you can have it jump into uh, Google Play and find that song so you can buy it if you don't already have it. And as you can see, it's getting ready to play. So we're just going to stop that and exit out of there. Now, to get to Google Now, you have to actually hold down the home button and then swipe up. Unlike on um, other devices, like I'll show you the G2 real quick. On the G2, you can actually just swipe up from the home button and get into Google now. But on the Droid Ultra, you actually have to press and hold and then swipe up. You do have your, you know, your back, your home, and your recents button. So your recents, you've got everything here. For the most part, this is stock Android. Um, you'll probably notice here that the the signal is a little bit different compared to stock Android. Normally you don't have a big 3G, in my case, normally it will be a 4G LTE. On the, like next to the, the signal bars, usually it will be above it. Um, there's also a few other things like, let's jump into settings. Like in settings, the icon right there, usually it's blue, not gray, which is part of the Moto Blur from back in the day. There's a few other things as well. I mean, it's, there's nothing too big a deal. 
a few icons are different. But, I mean, that's expected because this isn't a Nexus. You do have plenty of, of Verizon apps on here. You got the Amazon Suite. You got City ID or City Name ID. Um, you got Emergency Alerts. You got all kinds of stuff on here. You got Verizon Tones, My Verizon Mobile, uh, Mobile Hotspot. So they've, they've loaded this one up. This one is only in 16 gigabytes, which will show you right here. But the good thing I like about this is that it shows you total space, then what the Android OS uses, and then what's left. So it's broken down a little bit more than some other phones. Samsung's actually started doing this since the S4. Since everybody was complaining, they got 16 gigabyte, only got about 9 gigs free. On here, it came with about about 11 gigs, a little over 11, which I have about nine left right now. As far as benchmarks go, let's see if we can get that zoomed in. So we're gonna run in two two right now. I'm gonna talk about um, how the performance has been for me. I've been using the Droid Ultra for about a week now. It's been my daily driver as it should be. Um, it's been really smooth. Like, you know on a lot of devices how you'll have that jank or that lag that is always there on Android? This device does not have it. Now, I haven't seen it on the G2 either, but that's also running a Snapdragon 800. This is running a, a year-old processor that's dual-core. That's how great... Uh, Motorola has optimized it. <laughs> Not only is the performance great, even with the two gigs of RAM, uh, you saw earlier how many apps I had open. That was what about a good twenty or so, and it, it wasn't lagging at all. It wasn't running out of RAM, nothing. As far as battery life goes, I'm getting almost a full day out of it. It it really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm on Wi-Fi, if I'm on 3G, 4G LTE, etc. But I'm usually able to get around 18 hours out of this one. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Droid Max can get you a full 48 since the battery is almost twice the size. Now compared to the Moto X, this one's sporting a 2130 milliamp versus a 2200 milliamp in the Moto X. So battery life is a little bit better in the Moto X since it's a smaller screen and bigger battery, which is pretty much expected. Overall, I've been, I've been pretty happy. This is... The, actually, these two devices, the Moto X and the Droid Ultra, have been my first Motorola devices I've used since in about a year or two, almost two years, when I had the Droid Bionic. And everybody knows that device wasn't good at all. So it's nice to see Motorola coming back and putting out something really good. Although well, I'm sure that has to do with Google. So, and Tutu is still running. Should be done in another minute or so. But like I said, even with doing playing games, everything, I haven't had any problems with uh, getting this to <clears throat> making this lag. Like I haven't been able to make it lag. I've tried. I've even played Madden on here, Madden 25, which just came out a week or two ago, and it won't even lag with that. It's pretty surprising to me. And 2-2 two -two is almost done. We're at 93%. Hopefully, it'll be done pretty soon. And here we go. So, it's still got HTC One is up at the top above the Galaxy S4. And if you can't see that, it scored a 21,118, which is above the Note 2, but below the S4. It's about where I thought it would be. Since, yes, the Note 2 came out last year, and yes, the S4 came out this year, earlier this year. But the Note 2 came out during the time with all the Snapdragon S4 Pro stuff, like the Droid DNA, Nexus 4, Xperia Z, etc., and then the Galaxy S4 came out with the Snapdragon 600, which isn't a huge difference from the, Snap, the S4 Pro, but it is quite a bit of a difference. 
Um, as far as I guess we can talk about some of the Motorola apps on here. We've got Motorola Assist, which you know you got your three activities here. You got driving, meeting, sleeping, which it knows when you're driving in a meeting or sleeping. Well, sleeping it doesn't really know. You can set the time though. And you can have it silence your notifications, which means the active display won't show up when you're sleeping or during that, like for me, it's the seven hours, 11 to 6 a.m. Um, for a meeting, it actually goes off of your Google Calendar, which you can have it silence all your notifications or you can have it auto reply, basically saying that you'll get back to them soon. And if you're driving, you can have it talk to you, like read your text messages, tell you it's calling, etc. Or you can just have it resume playing music. Um, some of the other apps for Motorola on here include uh, Motorola Migrate, which I talked about this in our top five tips and tricks video. Basically allows you to transfer your text messages, call history, SIM contacts, media, volume and screen brightness from your old phone over to your Droid Ultra, which is pretty nice. Um, there's also, where is it? Okay, on the Droid Ultra it's actually called Moto Care instead, or it's called Help instead of Moto Care. On the Moto X it's called Moto Care. Um, but you can actually, you can see all kinds of tips and tricks for your new phone through here. There's actually uh, Moto Tips, Moto Care Tips. Uh, it, it goes by how you use your device and it tells you how, like, it tells you how you can optimize it for better performance and battery life. Like right now, it's telling me a couple of different tips right here. Some of the other apps that we've got in here include... Um, actually, that's about it for Motorola apps. Everything else is Verizon, Google, or stuff I've downloaded. Of course, this comes with a uh, free Ingress invite, which you get plenty of good stuff out of that. I actually took a screenshot of that when I opened up Ingress. Let's see if we can find. So, when you opened up Ingress, this is the stuff you'll get 50 XMP bursters, 10 portal shields, 50 resonators, 10 power cubes, and then uh, 5 ultra strikes. So, not bad. Not bad for picking up a Droid Ultra. You also get 6 months free of. Uh, Google Play Music All Access, which is pretty cool. But if you already have an account, you don't get six months free. It's kind of a bummer, but I mean, if you don't already have a Google Play All Access, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Now, as far as the camera goes, for me, it's been pretty good. You can actually get to it by flicking your wrist a couple times. And you can tap anywhere on the screen to take a picture. So there's no real shutter button. But as you can see, it's pretty fast. Um, over here, you've got your settings. Or at least you should have your settings. Oh, it didn't flip. That's why. So if you got uh, HDR, flash, touch to focus, you got slow mo, you got panorama, geotag, uh, sound, and then your gestures. Then if you swipe over to the from the right to the left, you can jump into your gallery and see the pictures you've taken. You can also do continuous shot, just hold down and hold or press and hold, and it tells you how many you've taken. And if you wait for those to go up to Google Plus, you can actually make a animated GIF out of all those pictures, which is pretty cool. I actually did one showing off Active Display, which you'll see in the written review, which will be linked down below. But that's the Droid Ultra Review.